Hi, kids. With so many things going on in my life lately, I've had uh, a number of small things come up on the element that I've intended to take care of, and then something else comes up, and I don't seem to get to it. For a little while now, I've had this issue where the check engine light comes on, and I've read the code, and it's an O2 sensor. Um, so I bought a new O2 sensor. We're going to put that in today. And hopefully, instead of that light coming on and going out, coming on and going out, I can just make it go out, and it'll stay out. I'm partial to ramps. I've had those things since the 80s, um, and it just gives me a little extra room under there. You probably don't have to have it to do this job. You can probably do it with the car flat on the ground, but having it up on ramps just makes things a little easier. Got a little more room. Can get a little bit better camera angle, perhaps, for you guys to see what we're doing. So let's go do that. So let's start with an exciting unboxing video that all the kids are crazy about these days. I'm going to be honest with you, I don't get it. I don't get why anybody would want to watch somebody else take something they bought out of the box that it came in. I don't get it. This is a Denso. This is an OEM O2 sensor. There's the part number. Not terribly expensive. Looks like this. Comes in a little bag. Take it out of the little bag, and, and what do we got? We got um, a rubber band. Ooh, rubber band. Then we got this. That's your O2 sensor. It's just got one plug, a little plastic cap to protect the threads. But before we get too far into it, I want to get my code reader out, show you the code that's coming up that makes me think it needs an O2 sensor. So this is the code reader that I use. Not the most expensive, but also not the cheapest. I like this better than the cheapest ones. I do have some of those too, but this one will do stuff that's a little more in depth. It'll read your seatbelt codes, your ABS codes. I think it'll read transmission codes, things like that. Um, so that's why I like it. We're gonna start by putting the key in the ignition, turning it to the auxiliary setting. Um, don't start the car. Now we're gonna take this and plug it into the OBD2 port, which is right here under the dash. Um, right next to your sub and as soon as you plug that in it's gonna start trying to read it powers up and starts trying to go it's trying to download codes from your computer takes a second there it is now what's that code that is a PO 139 code which it then it just explains it down here um, the issue you've got is an O2 circuit slow response um, from bank one sensor two. Now this car being a four cylinder Honda only has one bank. Uh, if it were a six cylinder, it would probably have two banks, but this one has one bank. So it's telling you that bank has an O2 sensor that's not acting the way I want it to. And that O2 sensor is the second one. We know that because it says sensor two. So it's telling you exactly what to change. So let's go under the car and find sensor one and sensor two so we can start figuring this out. So here are our two sensors. This one over here is your number one sensor. This is your number two, and this is bank one. So it's bank one, sensor one, bank one, sensor two. All right, the first step I wanna do is to remove this plug. Easy, easy like pie. Take it off of the bracket. And there it is, swinging loose. Now, I've had really good luck removing these with just a crescent wrench. Uh, they do make a special socket that'll go on there to take those off. If you find it really rusted in, you may need that. I'm hoping I don't need that. One of the things I wanna point out to you is this piece right here, uh, one of my first videos I ever did showed me installing this. And this is a spark plug defouler that was put in here because my catalytic converter is bad, it needs to be replaced or bypassed or whatever. But until you get time to do that, this arrestor will trick your O2 sensor into thinking it's actually good. And that's why that's in there. Yours probably won't have it. But it, it uh, turns right off, see there? Rusted ball. Get out. It's grief. Looks terrible. So I'm going to reinstall this the way you should be reinstalling it. This is what a normal Honda Element installation should look like. We're going to take this little plastic cap off, make sure this little washer is still on there. And just screw it in, guys. 
Might want to put a little never seize on there. I don't particularly have any. It just screws in. Careful not to cross thread it. Now what these O2 sensors are doing is that they are comparing the amount of O2, oxygen, in your catalytic converter compared to what went into your catalytic converter. And what this tells us is whether or not your catalytic converter is working. And we'll just take the crescent wrench and snug it in there a little bit. Uh, that's all I need. I don't go crazy tightening those. I just don't. I don't think it's necessary. Plug the plug back in. Plug that in. Put it back in the little keeper so it doesn't drag the ground. And that's it, guys. That's as complicated as it is. If you're having trouble getting a wrench on this, you can unbolt the shield and pull it down a little bit so you can get your wrench on. Then put the shield back on once you got it tightened up. There's your plugs. That's a close-up of what they look like. Uh, there's bank one, sensor one, bank one, sensor two. So let's go see if our error will clear now. Hook our scanner back up and rescan and see what we got. All right, what are we showing now? Same codes. And the reason it's showing the same codes is because we never cleared them in the first place. So I'm gonna push this button here, which is gonna erase the codes. Gotta hit yes. And it will attempt to reset those codes. Those codes are successfully cleared. Now, let's start the car, drive it around a little bit, and see if they come back. So if you're wondering, this is what 80 miles an hour in a Honda Element looks like. <laughs> so far, so good. Like I said, when I started off, I won't really know 100% until we have some weather changes to show me whether or not that sensor is doing better than the last one did. That's how hard it is to change your O2 sensors. Either one of them, very simple to change. Don't necessarily need specialty tools. If you have an O2 sensor socket, fine, use it. But if you don't, I've never had a need for one. I don't own one. So until next time, this is Clint Searcy saying, you can do this, I promise. See you next week.